Hi, happy Monday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. Uh, we are going to do a few things. Uh, tonight we are going to make our sewing stiletto. So this is from that sewing stiletto bead kit that we have in the shop. And uh, we are going to walk through the process of making this from beginning to end. So grab your kit, grab your beads if you have them. And the only other thing, again, just a reminder that you'll need is a paper towel or some sort of surface so you don't get glue and a pliers. So grab those two things and uh, you'll be ready to go. Uh, that won't take long. They are so fun and quick to make uh, that we'll have more time tonight. And we are going to work on the Splendid Sampler 2. I have this piece ready to do some free motion quilting on. We're doing the quilt as you go process for this. So that is the plan for tonight, everyone. Thank you for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginning crafters. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So again, tonight is sewing stiletto uh, making night and some free motion quilting on the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt. So thanks for joining me. All right, everyone. Nice to see you popping in. I'm going to set this feller to the side for now so I don't get him all messy. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. I'm going to zoom in for y'all as well so we can get right up close. So we are making our stiletto sewing kit and if you don't know what these are we'll probably actually use it a little bit today uh, but what what's uh, nice about them is it can help you I'm just kind of playing around with it it can help you guide fabric through the machine while you're sewing. Uh, what it really is like is an extra little finger, a sharp little finger that can help hold things when you need it, help you get into small places. It is just really a nice tool to have uh, in your sewing arsenal. It's just one of those things that you don't think you need and then you start using it and it's like, ugh, you're looking for your stiletto all the time to, to um, use it. So what it really entails is basically something, a long item with a pointy edge, ideally. Uh, the pointy edge can also act like a pin. So instead of placing a pin, I can just kind of stick the pointy end down and run it through the machine. So it's a great tool. I love it. And why not make a very cute, fancy one? So I, I have received, uh, I received this one as a gift and I've been using it for years now, really, I think. And uh, you guys have been interested in it and I thought, okay, let's make it into a little kit. So uh, uh, we had a pre-order for it and everyone who pre-ordered should have it by now. Uh, and uh, that's what we're gonna work with now. So here is the kit. Uh, we do have eh, maybe 20 or so of these left. So if you wanna get a few more, you can. Uh, after that, we probably won't be having you know, these exact beads or anything anymore. Uh, so that's, that's this. And I've kind of separated it here. Uh, it comes with some instructions and, you know, what the kit includes and everything. Uh, what else you'll need is a pliers. Uh, and uh, that's really it. Well, and I guess, you know, I have a little paper towel here too, just so I don't get glue everywhere. Uh, so, all right, let's kind of, I have the instructions by me here. Let's just run through those and we'll start this process and feel free to ask questions as we go. I'll be glancing up hopefully enough to answer your questions, uh, but this is just going to be really fun. So again, here's the finished one. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to make this. We'll set that there. So what we got in here, well, you know, I have my players. We have uh, the glue. This is some strong craft cement is is uh, how how we're kind of talking about it. Uh, so it'll it it dries clear. Uh, it it sort of kind of sets in a three to six minutes or so, but it gets really really like cement hard really. Um, after 24 hours. So you're not gonna use this right away. You're gonna set it aside for 24 hours and you will notice a huge difference between sort of dry and 24 hours. It's night and day. So if you're worried about that when you're done here, just wait 24 hours or overnight, you're gonna be fine. Uh, all right, and then this is this little orange thing is the nozzle. 
So it's uh, just a smaller little nozzle for it. And uh, it also has like a little pointy end there to, to poke through the glue to get it started. So the other things we have are a poultry, a poultry lacer. So this is like the turkey lacer. Uh, this is a four inch turkey lacer and a literal turkey lacer like that you would get for Thanksgiving uh, and used to hold turkey legs to the body, I guess. So just, you know, you can get these sometimes at the grocery store, but that is that. And uh, then we have our beads. I have one large flat bead. And uh, uh, if you make more of these and you're finding your own beads, Find that flat bead to put in the middle. It is so nice to have that flat surface uh, while you're working on this. You could use round beads and stuff too, but there's just something really nice about having that flat flat surface to grip and move around really easily. I do like that. And then we have two round beads as well. That's just our sort of fun decoration. Uh, and these are also, these parts are really decorative as well. Um, you know, they have a real purpose when you're making jewelry, but uh, we have two end caps. So those are the ones with the little kind of curved, curved little mounds, I suppose. Uh, and then we have two spacers and those are just, you know, the little thick guys to add some space. Uh, typically you'd put them in between beads. We kind of have them decorative on the ends here. So here's our spacers and our end caps <clears throat> there. Okay, and uh, that's all we got here. That's all there is to this. And uh, you don't need, you can do whatever variety of these you want if you want to do it in the future. Uh, just play around, have fun, see, see what you like best. Uh, the magic trick is the glue, I think, and uh, onto the turkey lacer. Uh, keep in mind, if you do, this is just a little tip, if you do look for your own beads, this is not a typical thickness that beads go on a turkey lacer, so you will need to find uh, beads that say that they have a larger hole. Uh, the typical bead hole I think is like one millimeter, so if you can get between <laughs> one and a half and two millimeter, uh, and a lot of times they'll say uh, that will work. <laughs> one millimeter will not fit on a turkey lacer here, and you don't really want to go thinner than this either. Uh, so little tip for the future <laughs> if you guys want to make more of these. All right, let's get going. Uh, you don't have to do this step, but I kind of like doing it just to kind of familiarize myself with the order. Um, and actually, you know what? First, let's, let's just go in order. Let's do step one. So step one in the instructions, use the pliers to close the loop on the end of the poultry lacer. So uh, you can see it's a little open there. You could actually leave that. Um, once it's glued in, it's not going to be a big problem, but until then it kind of beads and stuffs kind of slide off of it. So it doesn't hurt to just kind of squish it. You know, if you have a jewelry, a jewelry pliers or a needle nose pliers, that works great, but I'm just using this big honking guy and we're just closing that up there. The end. Easy peasy. Barely needed that. Right. <laughs> All right. Step one is done. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is just see what this all looks like, make sure the beads fit in it and everything, and, and they should. Um, oh, I hope so. I just grabbed some of these from the office. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's just, um, there's a, an image here of how they'll go, and we have the spacer. I'm going to take these all off, but it is kind of nice to just get familiar. So the spacer, one of these round beads, uh, an end cap, and the end cap's gonna be cupped around the that bead. So you can see how it wraps around it a little bit like so. Okay, then we have our big flat bead. Uh, another end cap, and that's gonna be cupped the opposite, or it's gonna still cup the round, the round bead, so we had to put it in the opposite direction. I think it kind of looks like candy in the middle, and the, the the uh, end caps are like little, the little wrapping paper around, around candy. And then the last little uh, spacer there. So it is going to look generally like that. So I'm going to kind of just take them off uh, my piece here, just so they kind of stay in order, just so my brain is, you know, thinking, thinking right here. All right, next up, 
we're gonna place a small drop of glue near the loop of the poultry lacer and slide the first spacer into position over the glue. So let's look at the glue here. I'm gonna undo the top. Uh, there will be a little foil end there. So I'm gonna actually take the, I'm gonna leave the, the, um, the nozzle closed. It kind of screws shut. I'm gonna leave it closed first and I'm going to just place this kind of pointy tip that's in there over the top and that will poke a little hole in that tin foil. So there we go. So we got our hole there and now I'm gonna put the glue or the uh, nozzle on top. So this is strong glue. Uh, it's not as liquidy as super glue, uh, but you still don't really, you don't want it on your skin. Uh, you know, wash your hands if you, when you're done here, uh, if you get it on your skin. And uh, it'll get tacky after a little while and you don't want to like put skin on skin. So, uh, you know, use your paper towel here. Um, if you get some on you, it's not the end of the world, but just like try and wash it off right away. Uh, after 24 hours, it's all gonna turn into this cement though. So you do wanna get it off within a few minutes. All right, I'm gonna take that nozzle off or the, the, the cap for the nozzle. We'll set that by the other cap. Um, okay, so we have our little nozzle. I am going to, let's see, I'm gonna hold this in my left hand uh, and I'm gonna put just a dab of glue right at the end here on the on the edge. So there we go. It has a little bubble there. So I'm just gonna kinda dab it around. It's gonna want to move a little bit, but it'll it'll stay pretty well in place. There we go. I'm gonna just get you know a little bit of a glob there. And I can put a little bit more on later. So I'm gonna let that be. So I'm just gonna set that on my surface, maybe a little bit away from my hands. And I'm gonna put my first bead on, and that's the little spacer. So the spacer has pretty big, pretty big, a uh, big hole. So we'll uh, put more on later. And we can kind of adjust this in a little bit too. So uh, don't worry about it. Uh, it just needs to be kind of touching the glue and we're, we're fine just like that. I'm gonna let that sit there. And then we're just gonna go up up the side. So I'm just going to put glue after that. You know, you can be pretty, pretty generous with this glue because it will, uh, it will be super duper duper clear. So you're going to be okay if you glob it on. Um, all right. Put this guy on. So that's just sliding over the glue and it's just squishing to the bead that comes before. And we're going to just keep going down the line. So now this is the end cap. I can actually get a little bit of glue on this bead. I'm still kind of sticking to the, the turkey lacer, the poultry lacer, uh, getting it more on that. All right, so I'm gonna make sure you put this one on right. So this is that end cap. You need it, or you, would, you want it cupped around that bead. So I'm gonna just put it on there. And there we go, just squish it down. Got a little bit on my fingers. I'm just gonna wipe off on the paper towel. Let's keep going. When I'm done, I'm gonna probably gob a little bit of more glue on on the ends. But let's just kind of go around here. So let me know if you guys are working. Well, <laughs> if you're working on this now, then don't don't set it down to type. Just uh, keep going. There we go. All right, don't worry about, um, you know, I have, I have it actually the flat part even with the flat part of the um, turkey lacer here. Don't worry about that now. We're just gonna get it on. Uh, we will adjust that later. Next piece, so again, this is an end cap. We wanna make sure that it's going in the right direction. So we need it cupped around the next piece. There we go. I got a pretty big glob of glue there, but again, that's going to dry clear, so I'm not worried about that. Kind of gob some glue in here. Get that bead on there. Now it's kind of all in place there. And last bit, 
just right on the end here near the bead, I'm going to, I'm going to put actually a little bit of glue on the bead again. Uh, but then we will put that last spacer on. Okay, so that is basically the first deal. So uh, what we're just really going to do now is just kind of kind of move things around to exactly where we want them. So you'll notice that the bead, that spacer, it's probably only going to be on your stiletto on, on the um, turkey laser just, just a little bit. That's fine. Uh, that's how mine is here. Again, this is like cement. It will dry there just, just fine. Uh, if you want, you can put a little bit more gob of glue in there just to make sure you got it. But uh, in the end, you're probably going to be A-OK. -okay. And you could always, um, if after 24 hours, this, you feel like you need a little bit more in there, go ahead and put extra little glue uh, here and there. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to just... Um, I'm going to get the, uh, this uh, round piece, the hook here. I want my middle piece to kind of be in the same position. So you can already feel like, I can already feel like this is starting to dry. Uh, so I'm able to turn this without it really moving much, like it's not falling backwards or anything. And these are looking a little uneven, so I'm just going to kind of push around on them a little bit. Try and even that out like so, and it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's gonna be just fine still. All right, move that a little that way. And I might put a little extra gob of glue right, oops, <laughs> this guy's moving now. Put a little bit up on the top here. Again, this is just be being paranoid, but really it's all gonna hold in place. And that is that. So all I need to do now is set this somewhere. So uh, I suggest propping it up somehow so it stays vertical. That way gravity will keep holding it in place. So uh, um, there's a couple ways you can do this. I think I'm going to just grab like <laughs> just anything, just like this, and you can prop it up like, like that. Um, Another thing that I know people like doing for this is just grabbing like a paper, or not a paper clip, a clothesline clip. I have not found that this works all that well, but it's, you know, this combined with, you know, some other object might do the job just fine. It really just needs to be propped up a little bit like this. Yeah, a cup would be great. Uh, Nolene suggests a cup. Oh, Nolene says that I... She just glues the first and last one. I, I like having it a little bit more secure, so I do put glue at each thing. How do you attach name? Sylvia, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Um, but yeah, so really, I'm going to just let this sit overnight. Um, after a few minutes, you will start to feel like already I can kind of tell that uh, things are getting a little tackier. Um, I can still move everything though, and um, that it's gonna be like that for a little while. So here's the patience part. <laughs> you just gotta kind of let it go and uh, um, and uh, see what happens. Oh, uh, Jenna's suggesting clips. Oh, you hung yours from a magnet, Patty. Well, that's kind of interesting, huh? Uh, I guess we're the ones that didn't. Oh, get the kit. Oh no, Lisa. <laughs> uh, Oh yes, shipping overseas is crazy town. I I agree. Um, I'm just looking. We could play around, grab some clips. I just literally um, when I made my first one, I just leaned it up like that, and that was that was the end of it. That's totally fine. But now I'm curious. I wonder how these little clippy guys would work. Could do one on this side and one on the other. <laughs> uh, whatever, whatever you need to do to get it straight up. Oh, dang. See, there we go. That's not bad. <laughs> Two wonder clips on the bottom. There. I think I might just leave it like that. That seems to be holding holding its own without falling over. Um, but anyway, so there there you go. You, you can, um, you know, give your final push 
of all these together. But when that glue sets in 24 hours, you're going to be golden. It's going to be just fine. Uh, ugh, they're so pretty, though. So, all right, you guys, that is it. That is totally it. Um, so I am going to set it aside. And uh, we'll, we'll work on the free motion quilting here. Uh, I'll check in with this at the end, and then we can see, you know, if it's set a little bit more. But really, you don't really want to putz too much with it. And I'm telling you, you'll notice a huge difference uh, tomorrow. Uh, it'll be completely usable. Like right now, this evening yet, it's, it's going to feel like you're going to want to try it out. But um, uh, it's... It's just not going to, it's going to feel delicate. Uh, but yeah, now that it's totally cured, uh, that's what it's called. Um, after 24 hours, it's cured. And if you look really close on this one, you can barely see any glue. Like you can see just a hair there. You know, it's it dries super duper clear. Um, so if you did gob it around in some places, like I gobbed a bunch in here and you still can't kind of really see it and it's only really attached on that side. Same with down here. I mean, if you find some smaller hold beads or whatever, it might fit on a really a little nicer, but I think it actually is kind of pretty um, with those spacers and stuff at the end. But yeah, so you'll have a solid piece tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to hear how they work for you tomorrow. Oh, one last thing, cover your glue back up. <laughs> so you can actually probably get a whole pile of these um, made with just one of these glues and maybe not a, a pile but you could probably get at least um, four I would say at least minimum out of the glue as long as it's not like sitting for a year or whatever uh, so Sharon's asking can you reuse the glue yes absolutely I have I actually used when I made it this first one I actually used the glue to glue um, some headphones together that fell apart <laughs> you can really use this to glue any anything together. It works on wood and plastic and, um, you know, paper stuff. Uh, you could probably do fabric stuff as well. It really works on everything. Oh, I, I really don't need this old uh, cover anymore because uh, now I have the cover with the nozzle on, so uh, you can toss this. Uh, this will probably go bad if you have it just sitting around for a while, um, you know, like a couple months after you've already opened it, but you can, you can, um, give it a go yet but it will you know not be great after a while and that's why you know i like these itty bitty bottles of it you know if it goes bad then at least you didn't buy like a gigungus one but yes you can reuse this for sure uh as long as you got it covered there uh so this is great so i'm gonna just set this behind me and uh, like i said you could crank out whoop, you could crank out like you know if you were doing these as gifts for, you know, your sewing friends or something, you for like the holidays or whatever, you could crank out like 10 of these in an hour or something. They're just so easy and fun. And, uh, you know, whatever beads you want, again, um, just a reminder that you'll need that bigger hold bead. Just really fun. Oh, yes, uh, Marie's suggesting that you can hold it up with your needle nose pliers. So I, didn't, I don't have a needle nose pliers here, so this is maybe a little wide uh but yeah you could probably just clamp it like that um and literally just leaning it against something is totally fine too and actually if you didn't even do that and just let it sit on the ground you'd probably be okay too ah but there we go so i'm gonna come back up here and i'm gonna reset up for some free motion quilting. Uh, we're working on the Splendid Sampler 2. I got the other machine out here today, so we'll take a look at that. And uh, um, I'm gonna get my my large sewing table uh, for some free motion quilting, and I think that'll be uh, super fun for the rest of the evening here. So we can do that for a little half hour or so. So I'm gonna set this behind me. We'll check in with it when we're done here tonight. And uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, we don't need these guys, so give me just two seconds here. Uh, I like storing the glue in like a little plastic container, but you know, it can go in whatever. Um, okay, don't need any of these guys. I'm actually gonna probably use my stiletto today uh, a little bit here and there, so I'm gonna leave that out. <laughs> like I said, this is a great sewing tool just to have around. The nice thing about the hook is I can actually hook it onto my wall. 
um, when I'm not working it. I did not drip at all. <laughs> uh, first time I was dripping all over the place, so um, don't worry about that. All right. So um, I'm going to get over to the machine a little bit more so you can see, because uh, we'll be jumping up here looking at where we're at with the free motion quilting. So one thing, okay, so here's the, the piece. Uh, we, in our previous months, um, we made these blocks and sewed them together and we have actually prepped this for free motion uh, quilting already. So we're good to go. We just have to start, start quilting. Oh, you need to know what quilting foot I'm using. Oh, on the older model Kenmore. Okay, for sure. I will, um, I'll show you that. I would like to get one for my Ultra Stick 6. Awesome. Oh, uh, oh, Jenna says, take my word for it. Your quilting friends will th uh, think you're a genius if you give them a stiletto. Nice. Fun. <laughs> All right. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. My sewing table here. Ooh. So I am going to use my extension table. Uh, this will allow me a larger surface, a larger flat surface um, while I quilt. But the first thing I need to do is I need to remove the neck or this um, little side guy here. Ooh. Oh, I know what's happening. There we go. <laughs> Let's remove this guy now. It's been a while since I, I've used this machine. So this is my mom's old uh, 70s Kenmore sewing machine. Uh, it had, That comes off so you can do like sleeves and stuff around this little piece. So this is the machine that is still not really fixed because um, I can turn the feed dogs up and down here with this, this button here. I can show you here. Um, so I got this little notch on the side and you can see uh, now they're up. I don't know if you can quite tell. Oh, let's get the light on. Boop. There we go. Um, it can go uh, when it's up. That means like the feed dogs, um, these guys are going to pull the fabric along. We don't really want that for um, free motion quilting because we want to move around by ourselves. We don't want the machine pulling. So you, in free motion quilting, typically you want to put your feed dogs down. So there they go. They dropped beneath. And this machine didn't do that for ages. So I brought it in. They fixed it. But now <laughs> when they're up, I can push them down so easily that I can't sew on it normally anymore. So there's something in it that is making it basically I can push it so they're not high enough anymore. So it's kind of broken still. <laughs> Obviously, I can't use it for normal sewing, or I haven't been. I have to figure that out, bring it to a new place to get it fixed. Uh, but for free motion quilting, where it just needs to stay down, now it works fabulously. So that's really all, the only time I've been using this. But we couldn't do it last month because there was a short in the cord that we discovered. And uh, um, so we had to get that fixed. So we got that fixed. We did not get the feed dogs fixed yet. So anyway... Here's the extension table. I have a, um, this is from, this is the sew adjustable table from sewingmates.com. And what's awesome about it is you can see all these little, um, you know, there's little adjustable bits on this, especially from the top, you can see it. Uh, there's all sorts of little doickies in here and that's so it can adjust to any sewing machine you have. So you can adjust the height, and the width of everything. Uh, and that's why I got it because I have not seen a, an adjustable one like this before. And um, like they're the only ones that had one sewing mates. And uh, I use lots of different machines and I don't want to get a custom one made for each machine. So I got this adjustable one and I've been very, very happy with it. And again, this just brings my, um, my working area up to the same level as the machine. So right now, uh, instead of it just like flopping over the edge, you know, flopping over the edge like that, um, it kind of takes care of that. So that's an extension table. You know, if you have a machine that goes into a cabinet so that you're already level, I mean, you don't need an extension table at that point. So 
we're gonna go here. Um, I guess now we need to sort of decide what we want to do for quilting uh, while, while we see it here. And then we can take a look at the foot that I have on. I have a few different quilting feet and um, I just, I've, I'm calling them quilting feet, but what it really is is a darning foot. So if you uh, look for a darning foot that will fit your machine, um, that's all you'll need. And some of them jump up and down and some kind of stay in place. I'm not really sure, you know, the difference. Um, like, I mean, they both work fine. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, but yes, yeah, so a darning foot. So sometimes people might call them quilting feet. So I have uh, this one. Uh, this is the Westerly foot, and I do use this pretty often. Uh, this is um, perfectly, like where the needle is, right in the middle. Uh, the circle is a perfect a quarter inch uh, around. So that's kind of nice. So I can always know when I'm sewing that I'm a quarter inch for my last line. So I do like using that. However, what I have on the machine right now is a... I think it's called like an open, it's an open toe foot. And what that means is that there's a space right here. It's not closed like this, that it goes all the way around in a circle. This one's an open toed foot and it's a C shape. Um, it's like a more oval shape. So I do love this. I think last time we used this, there was a reason we wanted this. Um, I just wanted to see the piece a little bit better. This uh, covers up, like I'm, everything's a little bit more visible than when I'm using this and it kind of covers up places. But look here, I can know that I'm, I can just go around the edge there and be a quarter inch away, which is kind of awesome. So I don't know, I guess this was just on the machine, so um, we can use that, but really either or, we could use, um, this is a more of a specialty one. I can actually put like yarn and other decorative threads through this, but I do like this for that knowing that I'm a quarter inch away. Uh, so that's, that's handy. Um, oh, it's also meant to be used with rulers. It's, it's a little bit taller. Uh, so you can uh, use rulers. Let's, I'll get an example of that. So, um, I have these little grip it guys which are also from sewing mates uh, to help move fabric around but they can also be used as rulers so uh, you know if your machines right here you can go around the edge and this thick circle one can butt up right against it this one is not thick it does not work well for for rulers first of all it's not a perfect quarter inch away so it'll change like wherever I'm at and it's thinner, so it can has a chance to slide under these these um, these rulers. Whereas um, this thick one, you can use rulers. There's a whole genre of quilting with um, with rulers. You can get really nice straight lines, um, really fun shapes and stuff. So um, it's really again depending on need. This is really fun, like I said, because uh, it's that perfect quarter inch, and um, for the ruler work. This is just kind of more open so I can see a little bit better. I do like that as well. So this, this is on the machine. I think we'll do this. All in all, again, they are just darning feet at the very basic level. Look for a darning foot for your machine. That will be fine. But as you like get more specific, like this is I think called the decorative um, like stitch ruler foot or something. You know, it's it's got a whole big larger name to it. And I can um, I can look up what this is like a you know get a direct link to it um soon too but there's that all right so i have not quilted in a while so this will be kind of fun <laughs> question mark um so uh first of all let's just take a look at this and kind of decide what we might want to do here uh you know, I haven't pre-decided on any of the quilting designs. Oh, one other thing to note is we are doing quilt as you go, which obviously this is not a whole quilt. Why am I quilting it yet? Um, we're doing a process where I can actually quilt smaller pieces and then I attach the pieces with a little binding strip later. And uh, we have a lot of that done already, so I can show you um, how far our quilt is um, with that. Um, so we we um, are quilting it in smaller 
pieces like this, which is awesome. You don't have a giant quilt flopping around everywhere. Um, I'm really liking the process so far. This is my first time doing a quilt as you go quilt. So, all right. Let me know if you guys have any ideas for this. I do like doing feathers, um, but there's some things, like the only thing I could think of is like maybe with this one we could do like, um, what do they call that? The like egg, or egg peels, um, orange peels, where we just kind of go like around these points in little kind of curved bits. Uh, we could just connect the lines a little bit. Um, I do like the idea that this is so pointy and straight and we could add curves to it is kind of interesting, I think. You know, this guy is really thick. There's a lot going on here, so maybe less detail on this guy would maybe be good. I don't know. I think right here, this guy I sort of have a little bit of a plan for, so we could do that. I mean, we could ignore these all together and just do big feathers over the whole dang thing if we wanted to as well, so... Uh, if you have any ideas, shout them out, but I think for now, I think I'm going to do just little curves around, around this guy here. And what I mean by that is you can kind of see, uh, we got some dividers here. I think I'm going to do like a curve, kind of got to map it out a little bit, and then a curve, and then we can kind of go around, oh wait, we could finish that up, and then a curve and a curve back then go around these bloops and do the next thing and then go around again, do the next one and go around again and then we'll end up somewhere and then we gotta decide what to do next. That sounds like a start, right? I think that's fine. I think it'll make more sense once once I'm doing it, in theory. So let's give it out a go. Uh, I'm gonna actually remove this pin already because it's just gonna be in my way and I think we have enough other pins here. So, all right, let's get going. I think we can do a little bit of this yet tonight. So I have my um, bobbin thread and my top thread up here already, but I'm gonna need to, um, I'm gonna need to bring that bobbin thread up, otherwise it'll get all tangled on the ground. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna just start right here on this point. So I'm gonna put the foot down for a sec. And I'm going to just move my wheel, like we're making one stitch right there. Oops, let's try that again. Maybe I gotta go backwards on this machine. This, this machine is backwards. My machine that I've been using, I have to go forward. So there we are. So I'm gonna lift up the foot again, and this is where I need the stiletto. I'm going to pull on the top thread, and that will pull up. There we go. A little loop it'll pull up the bottom thread from the bottom the bobbin thread I'm gonna just grab my stiletto and get that bobbin thread up so it is also on the top so now we have both threads on top I got both the bobbin and the um, top thread and now I'm just gonna kind of put them both underneath the foot so um, so I can kind of pull at them at the same time and that's all I need for the stiletto right now I'm just gonna throw it underneath uh, where I'm at um, we could probably use a grip it here for a little bit. So this, this again is by Sewing Mat Mates. It's just a nice tool. It has gripper feet. Um, I have two of them here and it'll help me just move around. I do actually like using the glove too as well. So I might switch back and forth, but uh, we'll play around with the grippets tonight. And you, you don't need anything. You can just use your hands, but your hands slide around quite a bit. I do recommend gloves at least. All right, so I'm going to start. Ooh, let's make sure the foot is down. I always forget that. And if you leave the foot up, it'll just make a crazy mess on the back, which sucks. All right, um, some other things to note. I have my stitch length set at zero and the width set at zero. So if I didn't move this myself, it would just start, it would just stitch in the same spot and wouldn't move. And that's actually how we're going to start. I'm going to stitch. There we go, in the, in the main spot there. And, uh, okay, so this will be interesting um, as I go, because I haven't done this in a while. So you want to, how is it? I want to move slow, but have my foot pedal go faster. Like I need that mentality in my head because that's not my typical way of sewing. So 
Uh, that's what I'm going to try and keep in mind. So I'm going to go like kind of a an arc to here. The arcs will be nice because we have a bunch of arcs in this fabric, but I'm going to do an arc to this center and then I'm going to kind of do an arc back this way. So it'll be kind of like an S. So let's see how good we do. All right, arc. And feel free to draw these out beforehand if you want. All right, then I'm doing an arc on this side. Whew, and back to the beginning. <laughs> and I'm reminded now in my head that to, to breathe. Because <laughs> I was holding my breath that whole time. All right, let's do it again. Oh, yes, uh, Colleen says practice pieces needed here first. Definitely feel free to get a practice piece. Oh, see, now I'm moving too fast, I think. Get a practice piece and... Um, of like two pieces of fabric and some batting in the middle uh, to give it a go. So that time I went, I was moving a little bit too fast compared to how I was pressing the pedal down and I have some like a little bit wider stitches here. So it's again, a reminder um, that I need to, in my head, go a little slower. Or I mean, move slower and do the pedal faster, which I don't know, it feels like I'm drumming a little bit, like trying to stay um, at the right pace here. Oh, uh, Amy says, my friend says, turn the speed to a setting slow that you can, that you can mat the pedal. Oh, interesting. So my machine does not do that, Amy. But what Amy is saying is that some machines you control, you can control the speed of your pedal. So if you turn it all the way down to slow, then you can put your pedal all the way to the floor and just that's your speed. That is a great tip. Um, I'm going to have to see if my mom's sewing machine has that option but none of my old ones here have that option to control the speed but that's that's odd. that's a great idea um christy's asking do i adjust the tension i am not sure you know what i think i might have made this looser so i would definitely do a test um it should be just like normal tension where uh the top the top, you know, you can't see any bobbin thread coming through and the bob, the bottom, you shouldn't be able to see any of the top thread coming through. So if you on a practice piece can just try and uh, turn your dial, your tension dial till you get to that point, I would actually mark, mark the dial where your normal um, stitching um, places so you can go back to it and then uh, just adjust until you have uh, that nice stitching where none of the top thread is coming through the, to the bottom and none of oops it's getting stuck here none of the bottom thread is coming through the top that's that's the tension that you want so you can adjust till there i do think i did um i do think i did do that and i just have this set at my one that i like for for free motion quilting since that's pri primarily what i'm using this um machine for so yes um test test on a smaller piece all right so yes this uh colleen saying it looks lovely already i do really like these cu curves connecting the dot i mean obviously it's not perfect but i'm gonna try and get better as i go here so i'm gonna connect to this spot here i'm trying to do it where i can keep a one continuous line right that's the whole th that's the whole mystery of free motion quilting for me still is learning how to just connect all the spots without having to like start fresh somewhere like pick up and move that is not something my brain is good at um while i'm here i'm gonna just snip um i need a scissors here i'm gonna snip the little starter threads there so these are my top threads uh if you can find a moment to snip them that's great because then they won't get in the way a ton later all right, so I'm going to try and not like move my piece around like this because if I was doing a bigger quilt, I wouldn't be able to do that very well. So as we go, I'm going to try and keep my head to practice like so, although it might be easier just to, I mean, we do have the ability to move it around, so we might give it a try. But all right, I'm going to try and do this S piece now. Let's give it a go. No, I always get so nervous. All right, I'm going to the center. And then feel free to move. And from the center to that point there. All right, we got it. Ooh, pretty. All right, now I'm gonna do that S on the way back up. Do that center again. 
and to that tip there. All right, looking fun. <laughs> Obviously a quilter who practices a ton will work, will get way better on their arcs and, and all that. I, I feel like I always need like a good warm up day <laughs> of this. Or like, you know, I suppose that means like a work up, um, like a warm up like 20 minutes or so. At least that seems to be the case when I've, oops, going a little bit far into that one, but that's been the case when I work on stuff here with you guys. I feel like I'm super clumsy until like, you know, 20 minutes in and then, then things get a little bit better. So if you find that that's the case for you and you really want your piece to be perfect, I would suggest warming up on a different piece first. Although I am doing a better job than normal at like going slow and with my hands and faster with my feet. I feel like that goes out the window pretty quick when I'm sewing. Um, all right. We're gonna do this last little bloop. And yes, continue to breathe. That is something I don't do very well either. <laughs> All right, I think I might have was supposed to do some of these bloops around um, as I went, but I can get them on the way back, so we'll be fine. It really is looking pretty already, though, isn't it? That's some. I think some designs are automatically really pretty, <laughs> and I think feathers are one. All right, I'm going to just bloop around the edges of these, and these... I guess they're kind of called orange peels. These orange peel designs, I think, just automatically look really pretty as well. Oop, a little stuck there. Ugh, oh, yeah, it's looking nice. All right. Next up. Kind of a lot of, not a lot of space to maneuver here. Oh, wow, that gun. That guy got bloopy. There we go. Two more. All right. We're kind of back to where we began here, and that's looking really kind of pretty. I'm liking that. Okay. Um... Now what? <laughs> so I think, well, we could probably do the same thing for, for these points. Okay, so we're kind of on one of these, these here. Or we could change it up. Why don't we change it up? We could do like, ooh, how about we do like rays coming out of it? Like a bunch of triangles that, um, you know, we could start at the inner point because that's kind of where we're at. We could, we could go along the line and then come up a little bit on the line and then go a straight um, to there and then back up, go another one straight there and back up and then just kind of do that until we're back at the line. And then we're going to have to like travel to the next piece. But then we could do the same thing. That'd be kind of cool. It would get this whole starburst effect out of it. And I haven't really done, um, I haven't really done that before so that'd be kind of fun let me just like see your comments here qu quickly here it looks like you guys are asking some questions oh you're you're planning out um stilettos oh that's fun that's cool all right cool all right so i'm gonna keep going here i think let's do that idea so i think we'll come up Let's see. We'll go up this side first and then go around this direction, maybe. All right. Let's, uh, I'm going to go straight up this line, which is not the easiest thing to do because we are doing it free motion. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to come up this line just a hair, maybe about that much. And now I'm going to attempt to do a straight line back down. Now, this is where if you had a ruler and you were doing ruler work, like with that other foot, it would 
be really nice because I could get this straight edge up here, kind of go like a quarter inch away, and then um, use the ruler to help me with, with it. But I'm going to just eyeball it. This might be a horrible idea, but we're going to give it a go. It's a small space, so I think I'll be able to manage. If I was doing this over a huge space, um, it'd be a little bit more shady. Oh, that was that was a, a good um, that was a good straight line, I think. All right, let's go back up. Oh, that's cute. Okay, that looks okay. I'm gonna go up a little bit more. I don't think I need to go. I don't think I have to force myself to go to the point. I think we'll just keep this little motif going. However, it's going to end up. Fun! They're like little starbursts. Alright, that's good. And then I think this will be the last one. We'll come up here to the line. And I do want to kind of get this last part of the line in. So I'm going to have to like backtrack a little bit on this first one to finish it. So, all right, I'm going to just kind of travel to the next one now. Trying to stay in that same spot. All right, let's do the same thing here on th this big one. I'm going to go to the middle. Make sure this pin's kind of out of my way. So one thing you'll find, or at least I find, um, is I'm better at some angles moving than other angles. So that's always kind of interesting. I think this will reveal that pretty quickly, but let's see. All right, let's do our first bump up. Attempting to go in a straight line. All right. Back to that point. I think um, Angela Walters, who's a really, really, really good uh, free motion quilter, I think she calls this like going like point to point sort of um, stitching. All right, let's go there. And I mean, this is, I'm, I'm stitching pretty densely, which means all of my stitching is pretty close to each other. We could have been do doing big loopy lines across this and that would have been plenty good, but this project is sort of my opportunity to practice quilting and uh, trying to get better at some of these little skills. So most of my blocks have been pretty densely quilted like this. But if you're doing a big quilt, um, uh, if you're doing a big quilt, then you might want like big airy spaces in it and stuff. Yeah, Noeline says that the grips make me feel awkward and your hands hurt and it's gloves down for, or gloves for me, hands down. Uh, I like switching in between. Sometimes I, sometimes I just don't want to wear gloves. Other times I'm like, nope, I just want the gloves on. So I kind of go back and forth between these. All right, let's, uh, I think we have time for a little bit more. Let's go up to the next one. I think this is actually fun. Let's see if we can kind of get through these maybe. I'm gonna try and speed it up a little bit here now that I know what I'm doing. All right, let's go down here and we'll start. I'm in like full concentration mode now. <laughs> All right. My stitching could probably be a little bit farther apart. All right, cool. Now I'm going to come up and over for this next one. I think I'm going to get this guy out of my way. So as you stitch, whenever a pin gets in your way, um, you can just take it out. I mean, we're permanently we don't need the basting pins anymore because we don't need to temporarily hold it anymore. We're holding it for real now with real stitches. So we don't need those pins anymore to hold everything together. <laughs> this is 
fun. Some of these are pretty wonky, but I'm trying to go straight. So some of this is actually going to go off the edge, which is fine. They're kind of like little flower petals almost. Yeah, I think this will be my last one here. Oop, that got curvy. Fun. All right, next one. Ooh, that one's kind of big. Ooh, I'm still finding that I'm holding my breath a bit. <laughs> mm, yeah, fine. All right, I'm going to get this guy out of the way. Oh, uh, Amy says I see clamshells. Oh, they totally look like that, don't they? Like little, uh, like, should be finding little oysters or mermaids out of these. I like, um, I like the, um, kind of the straight lines with these, uh, rounded lines, though. It'll, it'll be neat. I'm going to try and get back to the top where we started, and then we can kind of peek at it a little bit, hopefully. Um, oh, I got to get to the middle here. There we go. Like, I, I'm feeling like I'm getting a little bit more of a feel for it now. See, it takes me like 20 minutes, and then I'm like, okay, this is fun. I got it. Those sound a little bit like famous last words, but we're doing our best. <laughs> so this is that part. This was that... Uh, English paper pieced one that actually didn't get stitched to the end. So we're kind of putting extra attachments here. This will all eventually get sewn in, I believe. We had excess on these, so it's a little awkward on these ends um, more so than usual. But we're getting it. Oh. By the way, I, I checked the bobbin before we started, and it was a nice, pretty much full bobbin, so we shouldn't be losing that anytime quick. All right. All right. Up next, I still feel like I'm not breathing enough. I'm gonna on purpose breathe a lot now. <laughs> like literally, I have to tell myself to, to breathe. <laughs> okay, if I don't close my mouth, if I open mouth breathe, <laughs> then I, um, Oh, I'm going to have to backtrack on this one. Oh, well. Uh, then I'm breathing more. All right, I'm going to go back up along that same line. And this is the last one. So let's go to the center. So I got to kind of eyeball my next spot so I can aim a straight line. Ooh, and actually I'm going to need to remove the pin that's up here. Ooh, look how pretty it is though. This is fun. This is just so fun. Yeah, I want to get this one done and then we'll check on our stiletto. That's pretty wonky there. Okay, and then I'm gonna go finish this line here. 
And that's that. So, um, oh gosh, that is really pretty, isn't it? I love like these rays coming out of there. Ugh. And then from the back, it always looks so cool. Um, so I'm not going to take it off the machine um, yet because, you know, we're still working on it. But I'll leave this here for next time. But oh my gosh, this is going to look so neat. Oh, it looks cool already. So I wonder if next time we, maybe we trace the whole thing so we can see like that cool shape on the back. Or maybe we don't. It's kind of fun just seeing these as like big kind of leafy bits. Um, but anyway, next step is we got to figure out what to do next, how we get out of this and how do we get to the next space. That's, that's always the part that's tricky in my head. <laughs> so let's, uh, here you can see it above here a little bit. Um, so we don't have the pins in here anymore. Again, um, here, let me turn this off. Maybe we can see the stitching a hair better. I don't know. Uh, it'll be it'll be fun to take this completely off of the machine. I think we should be able to finish this tomorrow, probably. So we'll we'll see. All right, let's. Um, all right, I want to check on the stiletto again, so I have it behind me here. Okay, so it looks like my bead is still in line. Like the flatness of the bead is still in line with um, the direction I want it to go in. Oh yeah, you can you can definitely feel that it wants to hold a little bit more. It is wiggly, so at this point you can probably well you'll be able to wiggle it still, and that's that's the part that makes you nervous, right? It's like, oh, is this ever gonna be like dry? I don't know. This is kind of scary, but um, by tomorrow, 24 hours, you know, overnight, uh, this will be cured. So this will feel completely different. It'll feel um, like it's cemented shut basically it's craft cement so um it just needs to a little bit more cure time so i'm gonna just let this sit behind me and um let it be and we'll check it tomorrow so it looks like i got a little bit of glue on the side so if you do get like a little bit glue on it you can just scrape it off it's basically like rubber cement so right now it's going to be easier to scrape off than later so if you see a little bit just give it a scrape but it does come off later if it if you need it to you can just like get a fingernail in there and and clean it up a little bit um you'll be fine but yeah so we'll see what this looks like tomorrow and we'll give it a go uh so awesome so thank you guys for making that with me today that was really fun uh like i said you can make a zillion of them really quickly uh and it's just gonna be nice to use uh tomorrow when it's all solid for sure <laughs> uh, i'd love for you to share in the penguin and fish crafters group if you made them maybe wait till tomorrow so you're not handling it too much while it cures but uh when you wake up tomorrow uh go take a pic of it and um, share it in the penguin and fish crafters group on facebook i'd love to see how they turned out and uh, like i said i think we have about 20 or so more of these beads uh and uh, after that we won't have um, these particular beads anymore. So we'll try and maybe keep looking for some other fun beads so we can continue making these because it's, it's fun. It, the kit itself is a nice like gift for a crafter, um, but, or a quilter, but like the finished one for some quilty friends, I think, you know, you could always use another stiletto. And if you don't have a stiletto yet, uh, again, it's that nice tool to just use as that extra little finger <laughs> while you're working on anything. It really is a fun tool. So, all right. Thank you guys again. We will continue with the free motion quilting on this uh, quilt block tomorrow. So have a great evening and I'll see you then. Good night.